ladies and gentlemen, for joining us in this bilingual weekend edition of the news on Equinox Television, live from our headquarters in Cameroon's economic capital, dwelling our top stories uh, tonight. Academic activities as well as business activities have been crumbled in some localities along the border with crisis hit southwest region of the Republic of Cameroon. Inhabitants of some of the localities have fled their homes as a result of uh, the impact of the Anglophone crisis that is fast spilling into other parts of the country and local administrative authorities are now urging the inhabitants to return to their homes while government steps up security measures in their areas of residence and out of the country the United Nations is urging for an end to Zimbabwe's crackdown on anti-fuel price rice protests while the yellow vest Frontier government protests in France enters the 10th week. Nadine, we begin with the impact of the Anglophone crisis on academic activities in the crisis hit northwest and southwest regions of the country. In the southwest region, more than 90% of the schools, according to findings, have not been operational for more than two years today. Even those that are operational are seriously affected adversely by the operation Ghost Town, respected by inhabitants of the two regions every Monday and sometimes pulling on to about three days in those parts of the country. In such circumstances, what should be done? This question was on the table today as some educationists met to examine the impact of the crisis on education and what should be done in these difficult circumstances. Derry Jato reports. It is no secret that the Anglophone crisis has shook the foundation of all the learning institutions in Anglophone Cameroon. And as a result, many schools, both public and private, have collapsed out of the sector. Due to this crisis, many children, see many children not going to school. Academic stakeholders have been in these trouble waters for three years now. And to remain afloat for those who are still surviving, its members must come under one thinking cap to discuss, learn new strategy and exchange notes on how to change with these changing times. And one of the higher learning institutions that have stood the test of time is the Catholic University Institute of Boya, CUIB. Well, that they continue to work as hard as they have been doing and for the parents that we appreciate very much the confidence they have in sending their daughters and sons to this university. And Bishop Emmanuel Bushu of the Boya Diocese, Chancellor of the institution, while presiding at the Board of Trustee meeting, revealed that all have been kept in the hands of God Almighty. We just need to know that once you are working for people, they are not your people, they are God's people. Therefore, if you are starting a thing like this, you start with his name, you give him the chance, he will use you to make it go. Though his primary mission is to make sure that the teaching and learning flew, but Reverend Father George Kese Jingwa, president of CUIB, is seeing another disturbing picture. Most graduates today are a problem to the society. And how can CUIB change the status quo? You know, that we should be we should be wealth creators, we should create wealth instead of begging wealth, instead of being dependent on somebody to put you in the ministry. This is what is destroying Africa. So all that intelligence we have, they are waiting to go and write a concours. That, that is destroying. We have to change that narrative. At the end of the meeting, the board members congratulated the administration. The lone prayer of each and every academic stakeholder in the northwest and southwest regions is for school to effectively resume.
The Anglophone crisis has equally paralyzed academic activities as well as business activities in localities in the littoral region along the border with the crisis hit southwest region of the country. Some of the villages are now deserted as inhabitants have fled their homes as a result of gun battles between armed civilians and uh, security and defense forces in neighboring southwest region of the country and local administrative authorities are now urging the inhabitants to return to their areas of residence as government steps up security measures in order to ensure their security and safety. One of such localities is Mbanga in the Mungo division of the littoral region of Cameroon's Manjikan Gabriel Report. Doors of classrooms shut down and poor turnouts of buyers in some local markets were some of the realities that the divisional officer from Banga, Vo Armstrong, met as he visited Matuke, Koto Up, Koto Natigal, and Koto Mission, all suffering as a result of the crisis in the southwest region of which they share boundaries with. Even though he met with some pupils and students at some points of his stopovers, the number has drastically dropped as a result of the crisis. But what reasons have been advanced to the drop in number of pupils or students in schools? Why children are not coming to school is because they are afraid of all this crisis and their parents are afraid to send their children to school because they said they write a paper and plus in a front of our school that that they have born the school all those things so people are very afraid to come to school the population of matuke Koto Up, Koto Natigal, and Koto Mission are suffering on a daily basis from threats coming from unidentified persons. The people are not really sleeping because of the unidentified men that used to come and disturb them at night. They have given a threat to workers who are sent by the government in an area. So the impact is so dangerous in a way that we really need government protection to help us to keep make, maintain peace so that the people of the area should live in serenity. The divisional officer says his visit to these localities was to reassure the population of government's efforts to end the crisis, reasons why security was beefed up at every point. This situation is on a large scale and uh, affecting the total economy of the area and the livelihood of the population, we had to invite the living forces to meet us at uh, Koto Mission, where we had to talk to them. The necessity of sending the children back to school, I think that is the principal message. And over and above every other aspect is that we are in a nation that has guaranteed safety and uh, quiet enjoyment for each and everyone. That is why we are here, and we have taken all the necessary security measures and the guarantees to permit the population to go about the activities for children to go to school. Notwithstanding the comforting messages from the divisional officer, the people of Koto Up, Koto Natigal, Koto Mission, and Matuke ask just for one thing. We are also appealing that the government should really look into the situation so that the problem can be solved. We are begging the government to please to help us to solve this situation please and solve this situation for us so that at least children can come back to school. The move of the divisional officer from Banga comes at a time that the four villages under his jurisdiction have suffered as a result of attacks and threats from these unknown persons who move into these villages from Yoke and Malende, all in Moyuka of the southwest region of Cameroon. Coming up, for me, Armstrong Sander paints a disturbing picture of the deplorable state of roads in several parts of Cameroon's economic capital. Dwala, his report. The common thing that frightens every road user coming from Karifo Moske in Bona Musadi and Ten Koto and Tre Koto Shefiri of Fengudong Bange is how to drive across this large deep pothole qualified as a veritable nightmare by drivers and local inhabitants. So the problem that we are facing here really is um, uh, about this carrefour. We had a lot of difficulties 
Now people can even try to pass because in this hole there is no water. Every Monday, especially in the morning, when children are going to school, and then when there is water here, let me tell you something, when there is water here, there is a lot of go slow here because People cannot pass easily because of this water. You will see cars start from the other way to the other side. It is a breakdown point for vehicles, irrespective of their mechanical state, especially those driven by inexperienced drivers. Hardly a day goes by without an accident recorded on this stretch of the road, according to road users and people who live around here. And that is not all, as the road is also littered. There is an accident that occurred in front of me. There was this three tire bike with one, this hijack Namfang. They meet here in this very hole. I was coming this way. Immediately, immediately as I stand here, I see the man was driving the bike. All her face here was bushes and there was blood coming out just because of this hole. Water from sewage tanks across Block M empties into the main pipe, which is now exposed by the large deep pothole and the other local sea is simply unbearable the water containing excrement sometimes fill the pothole especially when it rains compelling vehicles to swim across the advanced degrading states of the road though a nightmare to users is used by some used to make money some mechanic workshops Tire repair shops and use ready to push vehicles could be seen around the advanced degraded stretch of the road, but they say recurrent accidents and the stench from the dirty water do not permit them to be consistently present. The condition of this stretch of the road in Block M, Koto Village, Dwala 5 subdivision, which has been on for over two years now, is pathetic, littered sometimes impossible and the people are looking up to municipal and administrative authorities for an urgent solution. He has been serving God and humanity for 50 years as pastor, uh, Reverend Bisu Emmanuel, pastor of the Evangelical Church of Cameroon, was recently celebrating his 50 years of service in the Evangelical Church of Cameroon and, of course, his retirement. Immaculate Fogui reports. With browsing gospel music and heartfelt testimonials, Hundreds of people who have heard Reverend Emmanuel Bisu's moving sermons joined him in celebrating his 50 years anniversary in pastoral service at the Evangelical Church of Cameroon in Betwa, East Region of the country. Reverend Bisu Emmanuel copied the example of Christ who wished peace to his disciples during his departure by doing the same to his Christians and to Cameroonians as a whole as he retires from his pastoral duties. His rich know-how and experience as a pastor and head of the East Region Synod indicates him to reiterate on the importance of living in peace. We have the role of understanding ourselves and creating a united bond. This cannot be fulfilled from others, but from each and every one of us. This is equally applicable in our churches today. Christians have to learn on how to come up with reasonable dialogue amongst themselves. The occasion, which was graced by the governor of the East Region and other officials, marked the end of Reverend Emmanuel Bissot's mandate as pastor. Out of Cameroon, the United Nations Organization has urged for an end to Zimbabwe's crackdown on anti foil price rise protesters in the country. They have been taken to the streets in major cities of the country, including the capital Harare and Bulawayo, protesting against the sharp increase in foil prices by government. Katsi, your news. The UN Human Rights Office called on Zimbabwe's government on Friday to stop the crackdown against protesters and urged restraints by security forces. The agency's spokeswoman also denounced alleged intimidation and harassment by the police and the military and the shutting down of the internet. The use of live ammunition by security forces um, was used. Um, excessive force was used. Uh, we don't have 
verification of the exact number of people who were killed or injured. Um, but there are doctors' associations that are putting numbers out there, like you know, more than 60 people um, were treated in hospitals uh, for gunshot wounds. Um, this is not the way to react to the expression of economic grievances um, by the population. Protests against fuel price hikes in Zimbabwe began on Monday, posing a major challenge for President Emerson Monangagwa. There's a severe shortage of dollars, fuel and medicines, while inflation hit 31% in November, the highest in a decade. The yellow anti-government protests in France enters the 10th week. Several thousands of protesters have been marching across the country against President Emmanuel Macron's government. Euronews once more. Several thousand protesters have been marching across France in the 10th week of yellow vest demonstrations against Emmanuel Macron's government. The numbers are down on those seen before Christmas, but the hardcore demonstrators remain unimpressed by the French president's promise of a national debate on the country's future. We don't believe in the great debate, says this protester, because it's just consultations with citizens in which the government won't listen to anything. We don't want to be consulted, we want to decide. The government put the turnout across the country at 80,000. The demonstrations were largely peaceful, in contrast to the violent clashes seen in December. And in sports, the successful organization of the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations, as well as the effective participation of Cameroonian teams in international competitions, or better still, continental competitions, are some of the uh, challenges and key priorities of the new Minister of Sports and Physical Education, Professor Nassis Mwele Kombi. And he disclosed this while receiving New Year wishes from his collaborators in the nation's political capital. Notwithstanding the withdrawal of the African Nations Cup from Cameroon this year, the government is still bent on having the best organized tournament whenever Cameroon will have that opportunity. We must focus on our efforts on the preparation of the upcoming Afghan, which our country will first in 2021 with the objective of making it a reality following the very high instructions of the President of the Republic. Apart from the Nations Cup, Minister Nassis Mwale Kombe says their eyes will also be on the honorable representation of Cameroon by all teams in different competitions. The participation of our various selections and national teams in international sports competitions. The unseriousness given to physical education in schools will also be a thing of the past as sports board says much attention will be placed on that with the National Football Academy expected to play a vital role. Improving the teaching of sports and physical education in our education system. Pursuing the process of implementing the sports talent dissection and training program in our disciplines. Thus, the National Football Academy, which started its activities in 2017, must stand as the laboratory whose experience should strongly for all of the above wishes of the minister to be achieved, the laws of the institution must be binding. Reasons why an assent was also placed on the implementation of the new laws. The promotion of the new law relating to the organization and promotion of physical and sporting activities in Cameroon. It is also urgent and necessary that all the tests of application of this important law be drafted to make it more operational.
Nasis Mwelekombi also announced in the course of the event that the ministry will go more digital and has urged club presidents to settle their differences in their different associations rather than taking them to court. He also promised that the days ahead will be better one for those working within the Ministry of Sports and Physical Education. That's it for this edition of the news. Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for staying with us. Good night. Good night, Nati. Good night, Babila Jonathan. Mesdames et messieurs, c'est la fin de ce journal. Merci pour votre aimable attention.